Now for the first series of videos in our Catfish Like a Pro video series, we're gonna focus on winter blues. Now I need you to do me a favor if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And while you're here, in the middle of the video, our elf on the shelf is hanging out and sticking around. See if you can find her. Comment below and tell me if you see the elf. Winter is one of my absolute favorite times to fish for blue cats. You can catch some of the biggest fish of the year, and you can have some really good action. Um, sometimes it is tough if a big cold front moves in, but if you catch it right, you can have some of the best fishing of the whole year in the winter. Rigging is a very important part of catfishing. We're going to talk about how to tie a couple different rigs, and later in another video series, we'll talk about how to apply these rigs. Stay tuned. So let's talk a little bit about equipment. Um, there are many different catfish rods on the market. You really can't go wrong with something like Mad Cats or Berkeley B&M. Um, there's a million of them out there. My absolute favorite is the Big Cat Fever. I have had these uh, Big Cat Fever rods for um, several years. Never had a problem out of them. I still use them today. This is a 7.6 heavy action um, casting rod. You can go with a spinning rod if you like. It's whatever your preference is. As far as a reel, there are, same way, a million different reels out there. Uh, I've always been a big Abu Garcia uh, fan, but recently I've started using the Piscifun Chaos. This is a 6,000 version. So far, I like it. Uh, it's got a good wide spool, cast good, has a bait clicker, has the power handle. It's been a good reel so far. We put it through its test, put some 40, 50 pound fish in the boat with it. Seems to do pretty good. We'll see how she holds up. As far as line, there are a ton of different lines out there for catfishing. You can go braid, you can go monofilament. I personally... I'm a really big fan of monofilament, especially the trialing big game. I have fished trialing big game for many, many years. For I was a guide for almost 20 years, and that whole time I fished trialing big game. I tried other lines. I tried suffix. I tried regular trialing. I tried fluorocarbon. I tried braid. And I always went back to the trialing big game. The awesome thing about the trialing big game is it's fairly inexpensive. You can find it at Walmart. You can buy Trialing Big Game at Walmart. Um, it's, it's really easy to find. I fish a 30 to 40 pound test. Now, depending on your lake, you do not necessarily have to have a 30 or 40 pound test. You could get away with as small as 15 or 20, depending on what you are fishing for, um, where you're fishing, what kind of structure you have. We have a lot of structure around where we fish. We have a lot of submerged trees. So that's why I fish with a heavier line. I fish with a 30 or 40 pound test. Um, that way I can get those fish turned before they get me in any kind of structure. Also, color does not matter. You can see this is the solar. Uh, I also fish clear. And I also have some of the orange line, some of the orange big game. Any of that will work. Line color does not really matter to catfish. If you night fish any, the solar or the orange is great, especially if you're using black lights. Um, other than that, the orange or the solar actually work really good if you're bottom fishing. If you're just fishing with a bottom rig, you can see that line moving. If the line I've had many times that fish will hit, it will take the line from left to right, or right to left. You can see that line moving and tell if you're getting a bite. Mm, everybody needs a nutty bar break. Mm -hmm. You want that? Mm -hmm. So now that we've talked about equipment, let's get into two different types of rigs that we're gonna use when it comes to wintertime catfishing. 
So one of the first rigs we're going to talk about is a dragging rig or a what a lot of people refer to as a Santee Cooper rig. You've probably seen it in one of our previous videos on how to um, tie one of these rigs. We're going to dive a little bit more into it today. So this rig consists of a no snag weight, a leader, we have a rattle, a float, and a circle hook. Let's dive a little bit more into it. So let's dive into the components a little bit of a dragging rig or Santee Cooper rig. Of course, you're going to have a hook. Uh, there are many different styles, just like rods there are many different hook manufacturers many different styles of hooks out there everybody has a different favorite it, like i said if you ask 10 opinions you're going to get 10 different answers um here we have an octopus style circle hook uh this works great um for smaller baits uh, i prefer this when i am fishing live baits in the spring or summer um this is would be my absolute favorite. The next is going to be a J-style hook. This is a Nocturnal Nations pig sticker. This is a great hook if you're fishing a giant live bait or you're fishing a giant piece of cut bait. Wintertime, I'm usually not fishing giant, giant baits. Um, so most of the time, I'm not using a J-style hook at that point. Let's move these out of the frame. This is probably going to be my all-time favorite. Um, this is a Dell's Tackle circle hook. I believe a 10 aught. It is very similar to the Team Catfish double action. That style circle hook has always been my favorite. I've had the best hookups on that uh, and, and would be my preference out of the different style hook, circle hooks. Next, you're going to have a no snag weight. Now, here are a couple that I personally made myself very simple to make, very easy to make, but there are a uh, many different manufacturers out for these no sn snag style weights. Um, depending on how much structure I got to which one I use, I'll use the longer, more slinky style if I have uh, uh, different trees or rocks. It seems to pull better through that type of uh, structure. If it's more of just a muddy or sandy bottom, I'll fish the smaller slinky weights. Next, you're going to have your float. Now, once again, just like rods or hooks, there are a million different opinions out there on what is the best float. Um, in my opinion, just a regular style peg float works absolutely best. Your line will go directly through the float and it just gets pegged in compared to some of the stuff like the Dream demon dragons i think hooker's terminal tackle makes uh different body style there are more knot connections to fail on those style of floats now that once again that's just my opinion uh other people may argue with you with it on that all it is is a zero spook if anybody that's even bass fished or anything has fished his air spook for many, many, many years. Um, that is all the Demon Dragons or the float you get from Hooker's Terminal Tackle. That is all it is. Not necessary. Now that's, once again, that is just my opinion. Um, and then also, if you were to hang up uh, and you broke your rig off, you're going to be a lot more heartbroken about breaking off a two or three dollar demon dragon than you are this 25 cent float. Just saying. Now, on my drift or dragging rigs, I like to add rattles. You have a different, couple different style rattles. I really prefer the double chamber rattles. I don't know if you can hear that they work really well i don't think color really makes a difference i think it's all about the sound now something else i'll do i don't know if you can hear that for my peg for my float 
I'll get a jig rattle like you use for bass fishing. Just use that to peg my float. It adds additional rattle. And then especially if you've got these stacked on top of each other, they're kind of banging together and both of them rattling at the same time. It adds extra, uh, extra sound and vibration and I think can pull fish from a little further away. Just a little tip that you may try. Works well for me. Now to attach the slinky weights, the easiest way that I found to attach them is to just get a snap swivel. Uh, you can see here, this is it's got a barrel swivel with a snap on it. Clip it through your slinky weight and then you can tie each end of your line to the barrel swivel. Easy. Okay, so first off, to get this rig started, let's start with a simple barrel swivel. We're gonna take a piece of line. I like to make my leaders three to four foot long, um, just to make sure that bait gets up off of the bottom. All right, so we're gonna take a piece of line. Now, here's where we're gonna get into another debate. I personally am a huge fan of a Palomar. There's different knots. Trialing knot um, is a very popular one. I prefer a Palomar. Now, to tie a Palomar, you're going to go through the eye. Now, when I'm tying this rig, I want my sinker to be on the same side as the line going to my rod. I want my leader line going to my hook to be on the opposite side of the snap swivel. So we're gonna go in and tie a Palomar knot. So we've went through one time. We're gonna turn that tag in and go back through that same eye. Now, we're gonna tie a simple overhand knot. You can see on this end, we have our leader and our tag in. And on this end, we have made a loop. So we're gonna take that loop and we're gonna tie a simple overhand knot. Now, once we've tied that knot, we're gonna take the whole complete swivel and put through the loop we have made. Now, I like to keep that loop up at the top. So you can see this is our leader in, where my finger is here. This is our leader in and our tag in. We're gonna pull that tight. Now, do you see how our leader in and our tag in went through that loop? Pull that tight. Now that, so far, from what I've been told and what I've learned, is the strongest knot in the fishing world. Now we'll clip that tag end off. And let's continue. All right, so now that we have tied on our snap swivel, we're going to go on with a rattle. Now, many of you may ask, why are you putting the rattle on first? Why are you not putting your float on and then putting your rattle down at the hook? I had a gentleman fishing on a guide trip one day that had a very, very good point. We had a fish uh, a fish hit. It, it, you could tell it was uh, a high-quality fish. The fish did not get a hook in it. It came off. This gentleman had been fishing, uh, had been catfishing for quite a while. Pretty, pretty knowledgeable guy. And he said, AJ, he said, one of my concerns with that rattle being down at the hook, do you think that the fish could bite down on the rattle? Which of course is going to leave a little bit of gap in their mouth. And when they do, they're gonna have a hold of that rattle and not get a hook in them. Ever since then, that has weighed on my mind heavily. Um, so I have started putting my rattle above the float. Seems to be working great. 
not had a problem yet. So we're going to keep rigging that way. All right, so we put our rattle on. Next, well, if I don't drop it on the floor, we'll go on with our peg float. So the peg float is hollow. It has a hole going all the way through it. We're going to feed the line through it. Yep, there it goes. And just let it slide down the line. Once we've got that on, we're ready to go on with our hook. Now, going back to knots. Once again, I am a huge fan of a Palomar. You can tie a snail hook. Or, or a, I'm sorry. You can tie a snail knot. A lot of people are big fans of a snail knot. I am not. I uh, <laughs> see what I did there. I prefer a Palomar over a snail knot. Right, once again, this is just a preference. I have uh, had fish can't come loose from a snail knot, and it just burnt me. And then also, once again, if you are, if you get hung up, you break your hook off. Tying another snail knot can be a pain in the butt. So I prefer to use a Palomar. So once again, we're going to go through the eye of the hook, turn around, go back through. I'm going to make a loop. Simple overhand knot. Pull our hook through our loop. <coughs> Guide the loop up where our tag in and our leader in go through. Pull it tight. That simple. Cut off our tag in. <coughs> now, the distance you like your float from your hook, I personally prefer about seven to eight inches from my hook. You can go a little further. You can go down as far as three or four inches. I prefer to bring it up about seven or eight inches. <coughs> and this all goes back to what the gentleman said before about a big fish clamping down on something above the hook. A great big fish, if he were to hit it, a big catfish that has a big mouth, if he goes up too far, what you don't want is him to bite down onto that float. If he bites down onto that float, he's liable to open his mouth, the whole rig comes out, you don't get a hook in him. So I like to bring it up, like I said, seven, eight inches seems to be the magic number. Now, once we have everything rigged up, we tie our other end on our rod, and this will be the same end that the snap swivel's on. Our line coming from our rod would go to this end of our swivel. We're simply gonna take our snap swivel. Most all of these leaders, some of them are made with a swivel already in them. The ones that I make are just out of a rope we can take, poke that snap swivel through. Sometimes easier said than done. And clip it on. Now we have our dragon weight ready to go. And there's a simple dragon rig ready to go and ready to catch fish. Now we will discuss in a future video how to apply this rig. So stay tuned. What's for dinner? I'm, about to, I'm re recording. Come on, woman. What's for dinner? I've actually got a pork butt, uh, butt, 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 butt on the smoker. I got a pork butt on the smoker. I know. We're going to make pork butt tacos. Now, the second rig we're going to talk about is just your standard run-of-the-mill bottom rig. Let's jump into it. Now, a bottom rig has to be the most simple rig there is out there. If you've bass fished, you know a Carolina rig. A Carolina rig is just basically a sinker, a swivel with a leader, and a hook. It's that simple. Now, there's a couple different kind of sinkers that we can use for this application. Um, there is a flat no-roll sinker. And then we have a bank sinker. You can also use an egg sinker as well. 
Um, then just a standard barrel swivel. I like to use some kind of, this is a rubber bead. Um, you can use a hard plastic bead. I prefer a hard plastic bead when I'm live bait fishing, but, but that's for another different, uh, but that's for a different, different series. Um, and then of course a hook, you can use a J style hook, circle hook. I prefer a circle hook myself. So let's jump in how to tie this rig. So as I mentioned, this is a very, very simple rig. Very, very simple. I like to use a leader that is anywhere from 18 to 20 inches long. You don't have to use a really long leader for this rig. Um, like I said, 18 to 20 inches seems to be about the perfect length. So we're going to start with our barrel swivel. doesn't matter which end you use on this rig. And we're going to go and do the same Palomar knot. Once you have your Palomar knot tied, of course, you're going to clip off your tag end. The next end, you're going to come down and tie your hook on. Now, once again, even with the octopus circle hook, I still prefer a Palomar knot. Um, a lot of people with an octopus style hook, especially, prefer a snail knot. I still prefer a Palomar knot, even though that's what the hook is made for, is a snail knot. Palomar knot seems to work just perfectly fine. So we're going to go on and uh, tie the same Palomar knot. That's how fast you can tie a Palomar knot. Easy, easy, easy. Now, we have our swivel. We have our leader with our hook. To put this rig together and I will show you on the rod that I just used for reference. You're going to slide your sinker. I prefer the no roll sinkers myself just because they sit nice and flat on the bottom. Um, tend to not get hung up very bad. Uh, that's just my preference. As far as a weight of the sinker, you can use anywhere from one to three ounces um, and if you're in heavy currents, you can go a lot bigger. But now we're talking about winter fishing. So most of the winter fishing that we're doing here on the Tennessee River, you don't have a whole lot of current where you're going to be fishing. So it doesn't really matter. Like I said, you can use one to three ounces. I use a lot of three ounces just because I can use those for shallow water. I can use them for uh, deep water. It doesn't really matter. So to put this on, you're basically going to want some kind of of bead just to keep from that sinker making contact with your knot so you're going to slide your sinker onto the line then you're going to have your bead and your barrel swivel it's that simple very super simple rig so here's what the rig looks like put together you can see a sinker your bead your barrel swivel leader Come on, down to your hook. That simple. Very, very, very simple rig. So that's going to wrap up the rigging video for our Winter Blue Cat series. Um, we did not go out on the water for this video. Just didn't really need to. We will apply these tactics in a later video so you can see exactly what rig you're going to use for what application. Thanks for watching, and if you hadn't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Uh, continue watching these videos. The next video we'll be coming out with will be locating and catching bait. That's going to be a great video. We'll talk a little bit about it, but then uh, we'll go practice what we preach. We'll go out on the water, um, go through it, show you what bait looks like on the depth finder, um, and we'll try to catch both uh, shad and skipjacks. So stay tuned. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.